Good morning, stars. Mr. Kraft here for lesson three of four writing this week. I'm so glad to be back with you. Before we get going, make sure you have with you all of your writing from lesson number one and two. That's your plan, that's your draft, everything you've gotten done. Have more paper and something to write with. If you're on your computer, that's great too. Let's go ahead and get going. As you know, I like to start each lesson before we get back to the assignment with some kind of warm up or some kind of instruction. And I'm going to do that today, but it's going to be a little bit different than lesson one and two. First thing I want to do is I want you to take a look at a piece of writing that my son, Ian, he's a first grader, was working on. It's not this assignment. It's something different he was doing. And it was actually cool. He was trying to make an entire book. And he had the great idea of teaming up with his older brother, Will. Will is a sixth grader, and they were going to write this story. So Ian starts the story, and then Ian, I'm sorry, Ian starts the story, and then Will continues it. I want you to see the good writing habits of my first grader, and I'm going to expose publicly for the first time the bad, lazy writing habits of my older student. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to take a look at this. And we're going to learn from it, and we're going to see Ian's process, and we're going to learn a lesson of what not to do from my older kid in a minute. So here we go. The book that Ian started writing is called Bendy and the Ink Machine. Now, some of you I know know who Bendy is. Ian's a big fan. He's fascinated by Bendy. And it starts out really cool, this story. It starts out with a note left for a character named Henry. Dear Henry, I have something to show you. Signed, Joey Drew. Dear Henry, I have something to show you. Signed, Joey Drew. And look, go over the page too. Okay, Joey, let's see what you wanted to show me. I was super excited to continue this story. But then my son, Ian, he passed it over to his older brother, Will, said, you write the next part. And Will thinks he's hilarious and he's lazy. And this is page three. Oh no, Henry died, the end. So, I will deal with Will, but this is ridiculous. Look at this great setup that Ian put down, and then he ended it. So there's two things I want you to take away from showing you this. One, I know some of you at home, you're starting this writing assignment that I gave you, and sometimes lazy habits get in there. Like, you might write a little bit about the topic, and then you're so quickly just trying to put an end to it. So you can say, I'm done, it's over, move on to the next thing. Some pieces of writing are short. Most pieces of writing, they're not that short. They're gonna take some time, and even if it's a short piece, it's a lot of work to do it right. So don't do this stuff. Put some time into it and make it right. What This was so promising. So that's lesson one, no lazy habits. <clears throat> lesson two, if you take a closer zoom here, Ian, my first grader, I, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but my black pen working with Ian, we actually fixed a couple things. You didn't see the original, but you can see we capitalized two letters that he had left lowercase. We added a comma. Over here on this page, we added the period at the end. Because even though he's a pretty good writer, like so many of you, we're all gonna make some editing mistakes because writing is so complicated and there's so much to manage in your brain that you're gonna have to make corrections. So he did that. We have been doing it all week. I hope you keep doing it. It's a good habit. All right, so let's shift gears a little bit. The other thing I want to teach you before we get back to my writing and your writing is I want to teach you how to avoid one of the most common mistakes I see in writing. I see this in older students writing at Coates. I see this in adults writing in my life all the time. It is about spelling the word there correctly. I said the word there. Come on over here. Let me show you something. So this is the word there, but this is also the word there. And this is also the word there. And when you are writing, you have to pick the right there and spell it properly based on how you're using it. They all actually mean something different, but they sound exactly the same. I see adults use the wrong there in their writing all the time. It drives me crazy. So let's take a look and try and figure out how to use them properly. There. If it's spelled T-H-E-R-E, -E, that would fit into sentences like, go over there, or there is no way out. If you're talking about a place or just general use of the word there, 
It's T-H-E-R-E. It's super common. We use it all the time. But don't confuse that with T-H-E-I-R, there. This is used in sentences like, the kids miss their school. Parents love their children. It's the kids' school. It's the parents, their children. Whenever an earlier part of the sentence or an earlier part of the story is talking about something they own, it's theirs, you're using T-H-E-I-R. Finally, there's a third way to do it. T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. Now, the apostrophe is meant to show this is a special type of word. It's called a contraction. And it's when you take two real words and you mush them together and you make it faster to say most of the time. Their really means they are. And it's used in sentences like this. The teachers know that they're lucky to have students like you. How do I know I used the right there? Because if I reread that sentence, I can just replace there with they are. The teachers know that they are lucky to have students like you. So if I'm writing a sentence and I mean to say they are there, I spell it that way. If we're owning something, it belongs to someone in the writing, it's this there. And if it's over there or there is no way out, something like that, it's this there. It's super confusing. If you're kindergarten, first or second grade, we don't even really try and teach you this. It's really more of an upper grade kid thing. But you are going to rise up and try and complete the assignment I'm going to give right now. Which is